back on agenda. It will be re-noticed for the neighbors to know. In regards to announcements and appeals, we have received an appeal for a project located at 1233 Mission Ridge Road. It was a request for a performance standard permit for an additional dwelling unit that was approved by the staff hearing officer last meeting, which is January 26th. Um, a planning commission date on the appeal hasn't been set yet. And I have no other um, announcements or appeals, so I'll move to the next section of the agenda, which is comments from members in the audience on items not on today's agenda. Nope, seeing no one, we'll move to the first project, which is 119 Cedar Lane. If the applicant would like to come up to the table. I've also got some here that were from the homeowners, both to uh, Jaime as well as to the hearing officer. Okay. Well, Roxanne's yeah, you already got them? You already got those um, I'm not sure, but perhaps I can just open the hearing with my presentation, Perfect. and then we can make sure we've received all correspondence Perfect. that applies to the project. Perfect. Thank you. The project site is about 7,700 square feet, currently developed, with a 1,300-square-foot single-family residence with an attached garage. The proposed project involves a major remodel and architectural change to the existing 1948 development on site. The discretionary application being requested for the improvements are modifications to allow the roof change, which is currently a gable and it will be a hip, to change within the interior setback here, here, and in the front. The garage is also being expanded to be more in conformance with current interior dimensions. Um, the roof increase due to pitch is going to increase the height of the garage by approximately one foot within the setback. Staff sees the improvements being proposed as necessary to secure the improvement, to give a new face to an older home um, that is still um, very compatible with the architecture of the neighborhood and we do not expect the um, alterations within these portions of the setback um, to have any adverse impacts on the adjacent neighbor. We are asking for approval of this project with the condition that plans submitted in conjunction with this modification correctly identify the curb versus the front lot line. We have made a determination that the front Change. lot line is actually 10 feet behind the rolling curb and that all the vegetation that currently exists in the public right-of-way be removed. So that changes the location of the setback that's shown on this plan. It's more like in this area. Correct. So um, it's probably more than a one-foot increase. Uh, if this no, it's only from here. No. Yeah. The roof is only increasing in height in the interior setback. The interior setback. Okay. Would you like to state your name for the record? Yes, I'm James McCary, the architect. Agent for Mr. and Mrs. Huffman. Okay. Would you like to explain the project? Add any additional comments? Sure. Um, no, um, Roxanne covered most of it. The only reason we're here is because of the the zoning changes uh, since 1949 made these uh, side yards a uh, setback change. And um, the application for <clears throat> an increased garage was done by basically uh, public works and uh, transportation. Um, uh, Chelsea Swanson had indicated, you know, to, to propose the extra depth of the garage so that the laundry and so forth uh, is located outside the 20-foot depth of the garage. Yeah, she said either remove the laundry or increase the garage. Right. I would like to point out the laundry was installed on plans for the original construction of the house. Mm -hmm. So this would be an improvement over what's legally um, allowed. And they've added no square footage to the house other than what was a, a closet area that was both access from the garage and the house now added to the house. It's like 14 square feet added to the square footage of the house. Our floor ratio is way under anyway. This is the um, this is the 
right now there's a gable that runs just about below where this line is here, so there's an increase here as this is a gable facing uh, to the west. And by making it hip, we'll, we'll opened up all this new channel in here. Side by side. Right. I've got one that I actually drew. If you want to help you out. Yeah. Do you have a proposed yeah. system? Yeah. That's what I'm trying to understand. Is what <clears throat> I saw the single family design board right. record of this, mm -hmm. and their last review, they were not supportive of the modification request. And then since then, the height of the home has been reduced to 17 feet, and the, and the um, roof material is the same to yes. avoid that. Yes. However, I want to know what kind of changes have occurred to the areas of the um, residents that are in the setback from this single family design okay. board changes. This is the setback showing this is the existing condition. Uh -huh. This is what the new condition would be okay. for the roof and that setback. This over here is still the same. It's just a, a different pitch of roof. So coming from a 4 and 12 pitch to, or I mean 5 and 12 to our, go back over here. So you've got the same plate height condition and it's going to be, a, a, I should have grown this in. At an angle like that, meaning from five and twelve to here is another five inches more in the upper setback in this area here. Okay, and what's it doing at the front? It's right now it's what thirteen feet. It's going thirteen, to 16? thirteen, eleven. And it's going to sixteen, eleven. So there's that that change is in the front setback. Correct. And that has changed that, from single but, family. But I know it has because <clears throat> they had a higher pitch in the single family. It wasn't five and twelve. It was over that. It was 6 or 8 and 12 in the front here. I can't remember what it was, what the original plan was. But, again, the reason for this also is the depth and the width of the conforming garage, which also, of course, you know, rise and run. They made it wider, therefore it made it pitch higher for the uh, uh, conforming garage size. Okay. Did you have anything else you want to add before opening here? No. Um, I'd like to open the public hearing. I have one request to speak. It's from Phil um, Potra. Would you like to come up and have a seat? And here's three letters we've received. Maybe you can compare those with the ones I've forwarded. Let me give you some voice there. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. I'm Phil Botro and I live at 120 Cedar Lane, directly across the street from this project. I wanted to take a... Uh, uh, in opposition, I guess, to one of your remarks about one of the discussions during all of this, these hearings was the compatibility with the neighborhood. And the gable design was always under uh, discussion and about the, maybe it belongs in San Roque, but these are all single family, low rise ranch type houses. So um, there, it, it really isn't particularly compatible with the neighborhood. Uh, one of the items that uh, I wondered if you could review was the motion by the uh, single family board on June 21st. Do you have that? Yeah, and point? that was what I was questioning the um, applicant on and what changes were made because they were, um, and I see Mr. Lomos here who's a supervisor of design review. He might be able to um, respond more, but um, the motion was, uh, that they weren't supportive of the mo the modification requests, um, and so that's why I was questioning the applicant on what kind of changes has occurred since the single family design board's review of um, the project. Because I understand that now it's no longer required to go to the design review board, but these it is um, not common, but when people are requesting modifications for um, architectural changes and building height changes and setbacks for projects to receive conceptual comments by the design review boards to provide input to the staff hearing officer. So those comments, although the project is not required to get approval by the single family design board, those comments are taken into account in my um, decisions on the mod requests. Okay, is it a, really a loophole that now that it's 16 foot 11 to the, the height of the roof rather than uh, 17 feet that it doesn't have to go back? I mean, it sounds like they found a, 
No, it's not a loophole. Yeah, no, it's not a loophole. It's just it's a requirement of the co the zoning ordinance of when projects trigger design review. So it's not. It, he had the option of applying or of um, designing the project to be 17 feet or less and have the same roof materials at the original um, design phase of the project. Okay. So but it's just it's the code requirement. It's a code requirement, all right? That triggers when design review is required. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that the vegetation in the front yard is going to have to be removed, and I discussed this with the architect. First of all, that hedge that's right in the front there should at least stay through construction as a barrier uh, rather than putting up one of those green fences, if you know what I'm saying. So it's a visual barrier from us to the house across the street or whatever goes on there. So I would hope that when you say the vegetation is to be removed, you're not putting a specific time limit on it. It could stay through the construction period, but ultimately it will be removed. The other thing is that there's a big elm tree in the front yard that is not shown on the plans. So when you say the vegetation is to be removed, the architect says, well, there's no um, reason to... Uh, feel that that tree is going to be taken out of there, but we don't know because it's not shown. So I, I'd like that shown. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah. We were uh, referring to the vegetation within the right-of-way. It, it that is a, within the right-of-way. Um, the tree? Yes. He's saying there's a tree uh, looking. Right. No, it's over here. Let me go to the uh, zero. Let's go to the zero one. It's a huge <coughs> elm tree. Mm -hmm. See, it's in here. But see, now we've got this, so this does come back, so we'd have to really measure to see if that's in that right of way or not. We wouldn't want the tree removed, obviously. Of course. You were referring right to the, the hedge. hedge. So yeah, yeah. Thank you for that clarification. So, uh, in summary, I, I guess I'd say there was a very strong motion here to, that they would like to hear this again, but as I understand it, it's not. It's, it's part of the regulations that that doesn't have to go back there. That's correct. So what would be the next step from, from this hearing, uh, the, the process? Is it to go prepare construction plans and then go get a building permit? Because we noticed they just put a yellow sign up out in front for, for the first time, I think. Yeah, that's a requirement <clears throat> um, of uh, any project that receives public notice. It re it's required to be up since the beginning of the review process. Um, depending on the outcome of the hearing today, um, there is a 10-day appeal period where it could be appealed to the Planning Commission and then their action could be appealed to the City Council. Um, and after the appeal period runs out or, you know, the appeals have um, occurred, then it's, yes, construction plans and building permits. There isn't a requirement for approval by the Design Review Board. Okay. <clears throat> so your, your hands are tied as far as any... You couldn't override this business about the 17-foot uh, referral back to the single-family design board. On application, in other words, that's such, not correct. an option. No. Yes, an app application such as this, a modification request, I cannot require design review approval. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. And then, in regards to the um, vegetation removal, the timing, um, all conditions have to be complied with prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. So the hedge could remain, and then just prior to they getting the okay to occupy the home, it would have to be meet the requirements. All right. Thank okay. you. Sure. Thank you. Um, Mr. Limon, would you – oh, is there anybody else? There's no one else in the um, audience for the public hearing. I have received um, – uh, Same ones we received. So same ones you have? Yes, okay. Sir. So I've received um, <clears throat> uh, a, uh, point a letter from the owner – uh, expressing their desire for approval today, and then three letters uh, in opposition of the project. And with that, I'll close the public hearing. Um, Mr. Limon, if you want, could you address the single-family design board comments? And yes, Ms. Rita. I, what I did want to clarify is that uh, although you um, mentioned that you could not require design review, you could ask the board for comments. That's something that, if you feel, is important. However, uh, we believe that the board was clear on the initial reviews, concept reviews, what they wanted to, to do, which was to lower the heights of the roofs, the gables, uh, simplify it. 
Miss Applegan chose to make a design change to try to point in that direction. Uh, ultimately, he also chose to lower it to a point where design review was not triggered. So um, the, the option there is for you to, I guess, to decide whether that intent has been met based on the evolution of the design. And if you don't think it has, if you think there's some questions about compatibility, I guess you could send it back and ask that specific question. That's, that's what I would recommend at this point. We believe he was, po he was heading in the right direction based on the, the, the original design. Okay. All right. Um. <clears throat> so, in terms of the <clears throat> actual floor uh, site plan. It, and the other thing, it's hard to review the plans without the right dimensions on it. Um, well, we've got those. This is an old set. You've got okay, a, so where's yeah. the one that shows the correct setback on it? Where's the set that I am? Um, here's, here's the set I have. You came down specifically and changed it. Okay, this one here. there's your setback. Okay, so this there one. There we go. But on, this is the existing site plan that it's shown on. Mm -hmm. And then the proposed site plan. A1, A1.0. No, A1. All right, this is. Still showing the old one. The old set. The old set. Set back. This is what we were doing. This was brought up to us when we got public work, so <clears throat> this condition across here still doesn't really change. Yeah, I think it goes right to the, um, this right here. Yeah, somewhere in there maybe. That lines up with the house edition. Okay. When, we, when I look at... Um, There's different levels of modifications and sensitivity, and one of the more sensitive modifications being requested is for a front yard modification. And it's more, although it is private property, it's more of the public setting, the streetscape. And so when people are asking for modifications of the front yard, um, I really look at what the use is that's proposing. And I understand in your instance with the, um, the garage wanting to make it the maximum or the minimum, meaning the minimum 20 feet, when you scale it this way, it's longer than 20 feet. It's more 21, 23. I mean, that's to the back, and then the usable area is 20 foot in front of the... So it's almost 21 from the stairs. Yeah, and the laundry, your washer, installations laundry installations again, again are legal. Yeah. So it would be measured from this area in here and here for the car clearance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I tried to do here is that this just single hat shows what is existing uh, non-conforming condition or encroachment. Yeah, and this is and, and, Yeah, exactly. Okay, and now explain Only again. Only in the setbacks, yeah. Explain again what, the front, what changes you've made since single family design board review of in the garage area. I know this has been lowered. Right. And the, the roof material has changed. What changes have been made to the garage that would change the comments that they gave? Well, by making it wider to make the, the minimum condition for the garage has pitched this roof, but still pitched it underneath the 17 foot. I know, I know but on, here's the June. Okay. Here's the plan, their last plan they reviewed. Here you go, A3.0. <laughs> you know about Yeah. <laughs> A3.0. <clears throat> so here's the garage that they looked at. Here's the garage that's proposed now. So how? Right. We took the, whole, the building mass here brought all of these pitches down into a lower configuration. This, as you can see here, is 18.3. Right. So we brought all this down to be underneath the, under the 16.11 for here. And then this at the same time was, was didn't have to be changed because it was already under the 17-foot height. I know, floor. but their comment specifically says, Continue to the staff hearing officer and return to the full board with the following comment that the plate heights and architecture of the northwest wing and garage are not supportable due to excessive mass and height in areas where the proposed modifications are to occur. So the modifications
I'm sorry, the front, the interior, and the interior. So I, I understand the House has been brought down to take it out of the review, but these comments regarding the modification areas, what changes to have been made to, re to well, respond I, I mean, to this? I, I think that's a single family residential aspect of it, not the modification aspect of it. The modification here, regardless of what the size and shape was, was still these, this here in the condition that it was presented, even though the, the uh, size is reduced from 10 and 12 down to 5 and 12. So this pitch has been changed, but there's still the same condition going out there. Do changed it? from here? Yes. This was 5 and 12 inches, I'm sorry. This change, excuse me, I need to back up. This change did not, was not in violation of the non-single family design review board. Okay, thank you. It was under these 17 foot as it was. I know. Okay. I understand that. Right. Um, and the reason that what tri triggered the review is the height of the house. They commented specifically on the part of the garage and the modification request. And the fact that the house is lowered and takes them out of review does not, these comments still apply to those areas. Why? When, Wait, let me back up on okay. this. I think as I, as, I mean, I face every agency that you have here in this city. I don't understand if we're not in a review condition where comments even become relevant. Um, that's what my intro was. Uh, okay, there's three findings. The modification for interior yard setback. It's that is um, the request is consistent and with the purposes and intent of the zoning ordinance. And one is necessary to secure an appropriate improvement on the lot, promote uniformity of improvement, or prevent unreasonable hardship. Okay, so it doesn't present unreasonable hardship. It's not uniformity of improvement. Those are usually when you're extending a wall out. So it's an appropriate improvement. Now, what you're requesting is architectural changes and. Um, height changes in the setback and on these when there's um, changes such as this is not uncommon for a project to be referred to the design review boards for comments to the staff hearing officer for um, input into the decision okay and so though although it's not required <coughs> I can request the design review board to make comments on a particular modification request and so that's why these are relevant because this is comments particularly on the modification request and what they were saying is that the modification they felt was not appropriate based on the design issues. And so that's why I'm asking what changes What I don't understand been. is we hadn't even went through a modification yet, and yet they've got comments on it? It's part of their, it, they go through concept review at the design review, and then it goes to the staff hearing officer. Then it, if it was required to have design review, it goes back for preliminary and final approval um, after the staff hearing officer. If, in, in this mm -hmm. instance, if this, would have been proposed like this originally and I could say to staff or at the hearing saying you know I have concerns regarding the changes whether they're appropriate or not I would like the design review board to review it on the design aspects and comment on them for the modification so although it's not required it can be requested as part of the review All right. basically then we, re we, the only changes that we basically made to the house was reducing the overall height and being set by the limits requested by uh, conforming garage. We used the same pitch lines that we'd already had, which these weren't addressed, saying that this wasn't. So now in order for us to change this, this pitch would be, be different from this pitch, which then I don't think would be compatible. So this wasn't addressed as being a problem. But this one is, and you have to both the same pitch height. Mm -hmm. So as far as design techniques to say, gee, we went right across the board and wiped everything out and reduced it all down, there'd be no need to come to any of this. But because we went ahead and made this attempt as per excuse me, as per Director Lamont, that we did build the building house massiveness down to we, we went ahead and did it all the way down rather than just going to another foot down or whatever it was from the eighteen three. To say if you're going to reduce it a foot, 
why don't we just go ahead and reduce it 18 inches and be below everything, so, which is what we did. Mm -hmm. As far as gables and the rest of it, we can show that there's steeper gables, more pitched gables, even in the same setback that's already existing as a model, that they, if they did any work to their house would require a modification, they would come into the same scrutiny. So this is still compatible, neighborhood compatible, even at this rake, even at this height, even in the setback. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lemon, did you want to add something? Mr. Reed, I, I just want to, to note that there was a reduction in that um, overall height in that gable, but it wasn't uh, specifically directed to um, reduce it to specific height. It was an overall direction by the board to, to reduce it. And as when I spoke to this applicant, um, th there was a concern that if you were to reduce it further, it, the pitches would not align with the rest of the house architecture. So if your concern is can you get that roof cable lowered, yes, you can, but it would be at the expense of not matching the rest of the home. Uh, that's certainly something that could be discussed with the SFDB if, if somehow it would not look odd to, to have it not match the rest of the home. Mm -hmm. okay. if, you, if we would like to return to, to, with that direction. Mm -hmm. okay. it's, a, it's a question of what roof pitch uh, is appropriate that would not look um, odd if it didn't match the home. How noticeable would it be if it were different? All right. Okay. We have all these plans. I know. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like you, I'm just, which ones did you have? Which ones did we come in later on? Yeah. Yeah. These are the these ones the ones yeah, that I have. These so are the ones that have changed. Yeah. Um, one last comment, Ms. Reardon. Um, often we do look at uh, what the styles are of the neighborhood, and I don't know if uh, I recall if you did present the, the comparison photographs yeah. of the other homes. And the, the concern, again, on compatibility would be how many uh, garages of this height would be facing the street like that on that street. And I don't know if you have those photos for comparison I, I have purposes. A, I have a general of, all, of the neighborhood showing the, very, the variety of pitches and multiple gables and so forth that it's I mean the they're, the they're primarily of, ranch style a, homes I believe well yeah some mixtures some is a, it's a potpourri a it's a mixture right. you got some A-frame structures you've got really steep pitch Spanish. structures you've got mansions you know wide Spanish to say that it's all if it is is of an era of course because they were all built in the, mm -hmm. in the late 40s um some have been changed, some have not been changed. But even at this house, and its original form is kind of a nondescript plain Jane, it's a little stucco box, because that's what it was at the time. Yeah. 154. It's about seven um, Up here. Yeah, 154. Which is here. Yeah. 150. 150 is here. 20. 20, that's, that's Mr. Bowen's across the street. Rosemary's over on the other road. Yeah. yeah it backs up this way. Those pictures, though, show the variety. Multiple here. gables. I mean, everything that we have, they have in, in, the, in existing conditions. Now, given the age of this house, was any, well, the historic, was historic? <laughs> no, historic issues. No, it's... I just made me think of that with Rosemary, Rosemary Lane with the Moody houses. Yeah, up here, yeah. This is some... Yeah. Yeah. Different street. Right. Okay. Now, this is a starter home from the get-go. Okay. So, back on the one, the ones you drew on. Thank you very much. Thanks, I think. Okay, well, in regards to the... Um, wait, let me read my notes. So in regards to the modification here on the, bless you, is this, this is the west sign? Yes. Um, I think that is an improvement over the existing situation, how it's pulling back. And um, uh, I remember a question I had regarding this, the stoop. Okay. Um, no, right here in the oh, setback. Yeah. 
What's involved here? That's proposed. I don't know. What, it's um, less than 39 inches high, I mean, less than 30 inches high, so therefore it doesn't even have to have a handrail. It's just basically a, a landing stoop for an exit, which is required by building the safety to have a hard surface from from doors. Okay, and the, and the building, face of the building, is this line here, or is yeah. that the existing? No, that's the building line. Okay, so any lights for the doorway, it's going to be located outside of the... In, in right, the outside of the uh, setback. Okay. They're already existing. I think it's a window there now. Oh. So that is that a window or a little No, this niche. is a door. Yeah, this is a door now. Uh, and then with a low wall around it? No, no, no wall. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is a, a, a seat wall. Uh, let's go to so the next south. one, 3.1. You can just... No, it's this no, side. No, no, it's right here. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. right here. That's the white, that's the patio, that's right at floor level, so there's no wall, it's just the face of the of the porch. Oh, yes, okay, yes, that makes sense, yeah. okay, the elevation of it, all right. Um. What they've done is they've just used, and other characteristics, um, Going, to, they use a little seat wall just to define space here, and then when it comes around, that becomes part of the... The facing of the, um, the the floor line, right up to the floor line. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then, if you continue this on, right, you've got a five and twelve, so you're going to probably be about three foot difference at maximum condition. I was just trying to look on the old. Uh, do you have your roof? Plan? Yeah, I do have it on that. O o one. Yeah. Oops. <clears throat> So we've got this this line coming at 12 from the previous condition. So, but that's 1.2 up. So this, the other previous architect had done this uh, as a zero, knowing that the finished floor was at zero because we're going for the 17. We had to drop it down to 1.2 mm -hmm. to make that the zero. So you add another foot. This was 13.2 at this at this um, at this elevation, and now we're at. Uh, Fifteen nine, something like that. Okay. So it's about the the one foot two is like increased to one foot six because of the pitch over what it would have been. Okay. Go my three O's and you'll see. Um, so we went to zero as our job floor, not the minus one point two. Right. So then you if you reduce this down, that goes to fifteen nine. For here, which then reduces this down to about 14, 6 or 14, 7. And the existing house is? 14, about, it's okay. it's 12 plus the 1, 2, so it's 13, 2. Okay. And now we're at 14, 9, so about, because of the pitch, it gives us up to about a foot 6. Okay. Okay, well, um, Like I said, the findings for the modifications, um, you know, the one that applies in this instance is whether the request, the modification is consistent with the purposes and intent of the zoning ordinance and represents an appropriate improvement on the lot. In terms of consistent with the purposes and intent of the zoning ordinance, um, in this area on the west side, uh, it, it is getting higher in the back, but it's getting lower in the front, it improves the situation. Um, it doesn't seem excessive asking for the changes. Um, there we go. Um, you know, it's just really a small area where it gets bigger. So that I think you can say it's an appropriate improvement on a lot, um, and it is an existing situation. Um, in regards to the garage, um, in terms of being consistent with the purpose and intent of the zoning ordinance, you're expanding it to meet the minimum dimensions and that's, you know, what we'd like because then you are more apt to use it for the two-car garage instead of having it right on, the on the street, which um, the street's pretty narrow. Tight. I drove tight. by yeah, tight. yesterday. Um, so to get the cars to be able to use the garage, that's good. Um, in regards to um, the appropriateness of what's being requested, the change I would be interested to hear what the single-family design board says. Um, 
I wonder if their concerns were be alleviated some since the House. Okay, show me that which number was the proposed three. Motion three. Yeah. Um, the height of the house has come down. I think that was part of their concern too, is the massive of it. Um, so does the change um, in the setback area, which is my purview, is looking at your zoning relief, is that significant enough that I believe it should go back to the design review for further comments to help in my decision? Um, after hearing your explanation and, and, and uh, further discussion, I think that um, I have enough information to be able to make my decision and um, I think that could be found to be an appropriate improvement. Uh, in terms of the design um, and the architectural style, that's not in my purview. Yeah. And it is, it, it is um, a provision of the code that if you are below these thresholds, the height, and um, in your instance it would be the height of 17 feet and not changing the roof materials, the code does not require design review. And so, um, you know, we don't have the resources to review everything, and so they have to have some kind of threshold um, and, you know, catch the ones that are generally more significant in terms of um, overall citywide uh, exactly. things. So um, I don't have control over the... Um, aesthetic part of it or the um, architectural part of it. However, you know, if I have concerns regarding the mod modification request, I can ask for comments for them. So given that long discussion, <laughs> I can make the findings outlined in the staff report and approve the project. I would like to um, put, I don't know if it's a condition because it's not really my purview, but um, On the head. related to the trees. Yeah. I would like them to be saved. However, I realize they are in the right of way, or if they are, if they're on the, on your property, I would like them to be saved. If they're in the right of way, that's up to the public works department. But I would, I guess, I can put a condition encouraging the public works department to um, review it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to to review and and keep the two existing trees. This indicates a jacaranda, and, yeah. and this is an elm. For sure, if I say that. That's what he said. I. I'll just say the two yeah. existing trees within the, front the right yard. of way. Yeah, the front yard. If they're, in the front, if they're in the front setback, they would require review yeah. by the Parks and Recreation Department to be able to be removed. Yeah, see, it does show, but it's not. Is it real? Not real big, but it's. <laughs> there it is. Oh, right here. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. yeah right here. Yeah, it's going to be in the set. It's going to be in the public right of way. Okay, well, I would, I would like to put a. Um, Sure. Condition on that for the review. Yeah, for them <coughs> to you know, encourage them to keep it if it's private. Yeah. And if they don't have any plans to widen the street or add sidewalks right now, it seems like it could stay until such time. Well, it would be way. indicative of this type of house anyway. I mean, yeah. a little cottage unit. Oh, I don't the, think the owners have a problem. Then the other that. condition, which really isn't a condition, but it, it's a requirement, but I'm going to put it as a condition that the correct... Um, Property line and when I looked at the plan, when I was measuring it from the corrected mm -hmm. um, existing to the proposed, it looked like all the improvements were outside of the setback, and the ones that were in were less than the height. So exactly. it looked like it was okay. Same yeah. determination yeah. we've made with yeah. our late information on the property. Yeah. So I think that it's not going to impact the design. But, so I approve your project with those three conditions. The one that was already in the staff report regarding the removal the shed. of the shed. And then also um, the right-of-way. Yep. You know, this doesn't say the shed. But that wasn't... The shed was legal. But it is proposed for removal. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I won't. I'm not going to put that in there. Um, but I'll leave it as the vegetation, those two trees, and the uh, correct front line property. Perfect. And my action is appealable to the planning commission within 10 calendar days from today. And they also have oversight authority of all of my actions. Um, and when, if you file an appeal, it's here at the 
planning counter, 630 Garden Street versus um, City Hall. And if an appeal were to be filed or the planning commission decides this requires additional review before them, um, Ms. Malazzo would contact you and yeah. let you know. Okay? Very good. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank and you. I adjourn Thank the meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Um, I don't know what's...